Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, uh, at, at Bernard Champagne again to talk about uh, the progress that we're trying to do uh, in simulating turbulence. Uh, <coughs> and this is a high value number. Uh, these are some photographs here. Uh, 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 there are some uh, results that we're presenting. Up, uh, the first one on the left hand side, we're trying to say, uh, say something about the complex structure of turbulence. And this is about how turbulence is computationally challenging. And the one on the right uh, shows uh, smoke uh, dispersing under the action of turbulence in the atmosphere. But before I go any further, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, support by NSF for the PREC program, of course, uh, and also the Blue Lotus project and Quay Star members. I really have, uh, I'm really very appreciative of the fact that over the last nine months, although I was uh, mostly in the time zone, 13 <coughs> or, time, or 14 uh, times hours away, uh, I think the staff members here have uh, uh, really gone out of their way to help me. Uh, we could be very favorable, very favorable results. And, in particular, and also, I should, um, uh, the organizers uh, kindly uh, rescheduled my talk. Uh, and in fact, I would say that it was turbulent and made it difficult to come, difficult for, um, <coughs> for me to come to, to, to arrive on time. Turbulence in the form of smoke uh, in some uh, air traffic control facility in Chicago that causes many, uh, many uh, flight cancellation. So uh, very briefly, I'm trying to do, uh, so say something about uh, the uh, these key challenges uh, that we face in this project. What do we want to do? We want to simulate turb I'm sorry, uh, turbulence at, at, at high balance number, uh, and in particular, we're looking at a resolution 8192 cube, uh, which will be the first time uh, that has been done uh, for production in the world. And the number of quick points is half a trillion. That's a very large number. And well, why would that such a large simulation matter? Well, that's because of uh, the importance of turbulence and also because of the fact that we need to uh, really resolve the, uh, the the range of scale, and why do we need uh, uh, blue waters? Uh, we uh, we try to estimate the computational resources. It's not something that we can do on the other machines, and in particular, uh, we have uh, the support from the PRF program that uh, that has been uh, very important. And I'll try to say something about the the science outcomes uh, um, uh, uh, as well. Then, uh, so. Uh, what is it about turbulence at high runoff numbers? Uh, any, I would say every one of us sees a turbulent flow every day. Okay? If you just will have to wash your hands, uh, go, to, uh, go to the west rooms uh, and you want the flow to come down to your hands relatively quickly, and that is going to be a turbulent flow. And, uh, but there are other examples like, uh, like the, uh, the uh, spray shuttle here. Uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, of course, uh, the uh, the propulsion, uh, the essentially the rocket engines here, and uh, on the in the middle of the picture is what we call grid generated turbulence. On the right hand side, uh, there's some uh, carbon dye mixing the body of water. So general, uh, the general properties is that uh, we have a disorder, <coughs> uh, we have a disorder, uh, disorderly flow, and say the three-dimensional stochastic and right range of scale are nonlinear. So if you talk to the physicists, uh, they all tell you that these things that make turbulence difficult. And in particular, look at the tip structure. Sometimes I like to say that it, does it look like some kind of uh, abstract painting by some uh, professional painter. We don't know what the painter is, uh, is trying to show us, but that is exactly the point in turbulence. Uh, that is why uh, turbulence is complicated uh, and difficult to understand. And, uh, and it's, not a, uh, it's quite a fair statement to say that understanding turbulence is the key to improve engineering devices. If you want to uh, produce an, a car or, a, or some engine, that uh, mi uh, produces a minimum of pollutants, and then has, we have to know something about pollut uh, something about turbulence and all of these other fields as well. Um, so then, uh, about just to review of some of the uh, last few uh, DNS, uh, uh, since I uh, assume many of you are not uh, in the turbulence community, and uh, direct numerical stimulation. What is it? Uh, uh, to try to solve the uh, try to simulate the flow by solving the exact equations of motion. That means uh, conservation of mass, conservation of momentum. And as a result, it's just as if we, were, if we were analyzing the flow of air in this room, as if we were able to tell people what is the velocity uh, of the air circulating, what is the temperature every um, millimeter or, or at least one, uh, every, every one, one, one centimeter apart. <coughs> so if that's solved in this case, uh, we have a huge amount of information that can allow us to uh, understand the turbulence and also therefore uh, get some ideas about how do we uh, model turbulence. How do we, what do we mean by modeling turbulence? Modeling, I would say, is the, uh, the idea of trying to represent something complex by something simple. How do we do that? Yeah, we have to know what the, what are the major elements of the flow, and we don't want to lose that. 
And um, yeah. is it still acknowledged? I did a world that uh, we uh, deal uh, in, the, in the world of turbulence. Uh, the largest uh, simulation was done by uh, investigators <coughs> on, on the Earth simulator in 2002. They, they did the first uh, 4096 cube simulation. And uh, there's an annual review of free mechanics uh, article about some of the advances that have that has, uh, been, been, been enabled. And yeah, now, between 2002 and 2014, I think we can say that uh, there has been an order of a thousand times in uh, the advance in computing power around the world. You look at the top 500 list. Yeah. But why you have not been, why have we not seen an, uh, the next level yet? 8192 cube, uh, uh, eight times more big points, or even, or even more. Well, that's, be, 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 that's because uh, the nature of computers these days and the nature of turbulence is not making things things uh, easy. In particular, there are a lot of time you spend in the communication and the requirement uh, increase very rapidly with the problem size as well as the, the, the parameter that we call the random number. And uh, and we cannot really. Uh, and, and also we need time to think, uh, we need time to optimize our algorithms, so it's very important that we have a uh, multi-year allocation on a multi multi platform machine like, like the Blue Waters. So we have to work on uh, optimizing the algorithms. Uh, uh, we, do, we try to do all we can and we pre uh, also ask for help about how to make the performance better. And then, uh, <coughs> we, then we have to choose uh, what to do, uh, uh, how long do we need to run. Uh, uh, how, uh, and, and what are the parameters? Because we cannot, most likely, we cannot do the sim uh, do the same kind of simulation twice. So if we uh, spend a, uh, hundreds of millions of hours and find that we have a mistake, then we have really a big problem in that case. Um, hopefully, that has not happened yet. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the data analysis uh, we can compute a lot of statistics and also try to visualize the flow uh, relatively efficiently. And here's a very basic idea of why, of how we uh, conduct the simulation. Uh, you take a, we uh, have a pseudo spectral uh, method based on Fourier transform. So the main requirements is how we do a, a three-dimensional a three uh, Fourier transform. So we have the data that's say schematically uh, in the form of a cube uh, with periodic monic conditions, and and, um, how, and the way we manage the data is to have a uh, the way the composition along two directions that allow us to use uh, many. Uh, many uh, uh, product processors at the same time uh, they, uh, if we want to uh, do a Fourier transform and we are doing uh, using a transpose based uh, FFT uh, as, as it's called so we have to gather the data along a certain direction uh, locally in core before we can take the Fourier transform but we have to do Fourier transform in all three directions so that means we have to uh, we have uh, we divide the data and we have to do that by, by message passing the, um, that is that's the idea and also, uh, the data are non-contiguous, so we have some packing and unpacking to worry about as, uh, uh, as well. Uh, so the, 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 the performance bottleneck, as I mentioned, is, is communication. And uh, especially, uh, the problem gets worse at, at, at high core counts, and we have been going up to about 256k cores, <laughs> half a million, a quarter of a million on, on uh, blue waters. We have been up to about 64k on, on other machines uh, in the periscope, uh, in the protocol range, and uh, so how do we do that? Yeah, if we do uh, do just do the simple thing, uh, pure again, MPI, uh, 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 the MPI corrective uh, uh, all to all. If we find that if we find that it's not really good enough, uh, and uh, so we have tried a number of things. Uh, one is to use uh, open MP uh, since uh, blue waters uh, consist of multi-core processors. How about if we have uh, one M uh, each uh, node acting as one MPI task, and we have as many uh, cores that we have can on, uh, uh, acting as um, uh, as a part of us. So uh, we we find that this method does uh, reduce the uh, communication overhead, uh, and it seems to be uh, uh, seems to be a good uh, at, at very large core counts. Um, but on blue waters, actually, uh, something has been better. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, uh, using a remote memory addressing very, very adapted to um, to, uh, to to Bob the fleet of Quake uh, and he has really done the heavy lifting work for us. Uh, so the idea is to uh, use the uh, core wave feature uh, that is uh, supported by the uh, Quake compiler. So we declare some major communication buffers. We declare so number of so-called core waves. So in core ways, uh, we are accessible to other processors. So uh, we do a, uh, essentially one-sided communication. Uh, we let uh, each, uh, each process, we let MPI tasks be able to pick out the data that we want it wants from another MPI task. 
And uh, we uh, we do have this one. What there is some uh, some some overhead though. Okay? There's some overhead between the copy uh, eventually back to the to the, to the, to the record other way. We we try. Of course, uh, we like to uh, the code you want better. At the same time, we also would like to limit the amount of effort that we have to spend on changing the code. So that's why in the rest of the code uh, we are still using record other ways. But we find that the best performance is obtained when we run on the on a reserve partition. Uh, reserve partition uh, that's designed to minimize the contention from, from the network traffic. And um, uh, so this uh, earlier so, so earlier today. Uh, uh, Greg and others, uh, um, Greg, I'm sorry, Greg and, and, and others, uh, they gave a talk about uh, topology of rest scheduling, and we're hoping that that um, uh, things can be even better uh, along, along the lines of what we have experienced in the last uh, few months. So, so here's a here's a collection of the of, of the time traces over over a period of about eight months. And uh, this is the uh, CPU, uh, one I'm plotting is the CPU time per, uh, per time set as a function of uh, here the number of time sets that we have been running up to about 200,000 time sets now. And uh, every now and then you, uh, now, uh, you see that the data jumps up somewhat uh, <coughs> some regular intervals. Now that's, that is entirely due to the I.O. somewhat artificial. But uh, uh, in September, uh, we, uh, we were excited when we uh, experienced uh, 13 seconds per time set, the ball there, there. And uh, now, uh, because of uh, changes in the um, network topology of the machine uh, that was implemented, I think, in November or, or, or December. 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 So uh, in December, uh, you see that uh, we started getting about 9 seconds. So this is what we look for now. now. And uh, this, uh, this uh, oscillation up and down sometimes worse, uh, sometimes uh, better, because uh, that's due to the network traffic. Uh, and this is uh, somewhat high turbulence in that group, right, to me. But um, but we are pretty uh, satisfied with the requirement, uh, with the performance of the code now, and so uh, we have some uh, uh, science results that I wanted to talk about in the uh, uh, remaining part of the code. Meaning, remaining part of, of, of my talk. <coughs> uh, so we have a 8192 cube uh, simulation yard in progress. Uh, and, uh, I went to a conference in Japan uh, a few months ago. Um, I think uh, there are some people in Japan very good at this kind of work, uh, but we, yeah, it appears that uh, we have been we are ahead at the moment. Uh, so we, are, we have been using uh, the 256k cores. And uh, we have what we call four stabilization state. Basically, we try to have everything relatively steady, going up and down and down. And, uh, and, and, uh, and we save many snapshots. Uh, every now and then, in the, uh, um, uh, we will save all the data and we try to analyze it uh, later. As I said, uh, we cannot, I think we have, uh, even though that we have been uh, very fortunate to get a large amount of allocations on, on blue waters, uh, we cannot afford to do the same simulation or the same kind of simulation twice. So we have to uh, choose our, our parameters very carefully. At this, uh, what we call the Taylor scale Reynolds number. This number is just slightly higher than uh, what uh, the uh, researchers in Japan were able to achieve uh, in 2002. But we have uh, we have better accuracy here. <coughs> and uh, so some of the, and we, and we have to consist, uh, constantly think about uh, it and also get, get the, uh, the advice of some of the uh, our collaborators. What are the what are some of the best science questions that cannot be solved? <coughs> With all good data, both uh, the high bounds number and high bounds both. So, in other words, uh, what do we do with these simulations for? Are we really learning anything? And I try to go along a few things that uh, are uh, here. And, and, and of course, this is the next one. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, the subject of prevalence, uh, the uh, quick uh, final quantity is, uh, is the uh, so called energy spectrum. Energy spectrum is uh, how, is it gives you a measure of how much of the fluctuations are, let's say, Occurring at the large scale, the large scale mean relatively slowly, and, and some and some of the things that would also change on the other hand and might change quickly. So k is a wave number in fact. So k is a wave number, but uh, the the classical theory of turbulence uh, uh, is that uh, the energy spectrum would be proportional to the case of the minus five thirds the wave, wave number. And uh, so you multiply it by k to the five thirds, and with this uh, uh, dissipate energy dissipation rate. The interval of number is sufficiently high for the wide range of scales. Uh, here, we at uh, the first point and the last point are four decades <coughs> apart. Uh, uh, what we're saying here, we have a 49, 8192 cube simulation. 
So we have uh, we have uh, we have this behavior here with uh, uh, the, uh, the value that's called the Gomogov constant. And we also have this phenomenon which is called bottleneck in the middle of uh, here. And that's what we, and if the Reynolds number is not very high, then what happens? Uh, if we want to uh, maintain accuracy at a small scale, uh, and then we would have a curve that would probably somewhere here, and, and that would be hard to tell precisely what's going on in the middle. And, um, and then so it's, it's something that we call the, in it, the dissipation. Um, there's a name, there's a reason for this name, but say, if we think about the uh, velocity uh, uh, as a function of position, and then uh, you can take the, uh, you can form the so-called velocity gradient. The velocity gradient is a uh, second order tensor, and uh, it can be, uh, or, or it, I just any second order matrix, uh, you can split it into symmetric part and any symmetric parts. The symmetric part is called, is called a swing wave, and the, and the, and the anti-symmetric part is called a rotation wave. So what does the swing wave do? If you have a frame surface, if you're going to squash out something, that is going to break. Okay, if we have a birthday party where somebody blows off the candle, that's what is happening precisely. And once the, once, once the candle is going off, you, we see some smoke just swirling around. And that is the fact that in that, you, actually we are, seeing, we are seeing the rotation. And, uh, I mean, up at, the, at the birthday party, they're typically a, a small, we don't complain too much about it, there's a small air pollution problem, right? And, and, and turbulence as a well, well in that. And um, so the, we, uh, and these two variables are both important in turbulence theory, and one of the important questions is whether they, uh, they, are, whether they have a different, uh, similar behavior of high Reynolds number, and whether they, uh, they happen together uh, as well. And uh, we also 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 say something about the pressure distribution. The low pressure and high pressure is uh, maybe important in the say in the case of a thunderstorm or a tornado. <coughs> then uh, here's a visualization uh, image. Uh, this is from uh, uh, work by uh, uh, consultants at Texas uh, five six years ago now. The forty ninety six cube on, on the left hand side. So the left hand side is a full image, and then and if we uh, and, and we decided there was something interesting here, and then you would zoom, you know, put it out in the picture like that. And, and the red color will be sense intense and so figure uh, things that are swirling around, sort of like, like what, what we call a worm. A worm is like if we uh, have a, a little wire, and then there was uh, wiggling around, and uh, the, uh, dissipation has a, has a, has a different uh, different uh, spatial structure. And here's a uh, image uh, made from the 1892 cube data uh, by Dave and I think he is not here today uh, because of my, my arrival I missed an opportunity to see him in person. But he did uh, he created this image for us uh, using uh, using uh, using a parallel version of of, of, the, of the wizard uh, program. And uh, what we are seeing is a, a pseudo a contour of a 1024 cubes uh, a sample sub cube. And uh, basically, uh, most intense uh, the rotation wise uh, fluid that's running around, uh, that it would be by uh, be almost wide. And the directions here are somewhat difficult to see, but I know that the, the largest, uh, what is the largest value? The largest value is about uh, uh, 2,000 times the mean. I think I have uh, gone over time, and I cannot afford you after all. Uh, so, so let me do, go quickly here. There are some uh, the uh, conclusions that we cannot uh, do again. Uh, we, we have a high, uh, do not have sufficiently high Reynolds number, and so there's a low Reynolds number and a high Reynolds number. Low Reynolds number, you can see that these, uh, we say that these two curves are, are different. And now, but if we go further, then we see that there is something different happening. And in the 92 cube, uh, we have a group team, these two groups of lines. Um, if we have uh, have uh, uh, 2,000 times the mean, uh, then uh, the, uh, these two groups of lines are uh, quite similar. 4,000 uh, or 3,000 something, they start to merge together again. <coughs> so these are things that we could not see uh, if the Reynolds uh, simulation were not uh, uh, sufficiently large. Uh, I, don't know, I think I don't have to skip this one, uh, the, uh, the statistics of the acceleration. Um, but uh, here's a probability density function. When you find a random variable, which uh, has about, which I go uh, up and down uh, from, uh, from the mean value, but uh, 100 times the ascent equation, or even more. So that's what we call, we refer to as, as a, uh, essentially extreme events. And, and the thing about turbulent mixing, turbulent mixing has to do with some chemical substances uh, or heat, and uh, the molecular diversity uh, has, has an effect that makes the uh, problem, often can make the problem even more challenging. 
and uh, and this version this this version is a uh, about uh, uh, smoke. Well, let's say one example. You read well, so smell something. One of the first question might be where does smoke come? Where does the, 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 the smoke come from? And your Markov simulations, I didn't mention it in detail here. Are actually, a good way to answer that that, that question. And and finally, well, uh, here uh, we we are still got doing to do. We have more work ahead for science as well as the algorithms, and also uh, in the future we should be doing uh, some more complicated problems. Thank you very much. <laughs>